Welcome to Strange and Scary Story Talk. I'm Heather Nani, and tonight we're talking about Edith Wharton's The Pomegranate Seed. Now, if you haven't yet read this story, please turn this off, go and read it, and come back because this is full of spoilers. If you have read it briefly, Edith Wharton was born in 1862, passed away in 1937. She's best known for her um, stories, her biting commentary on the upper class society of New York City, most famous for The Age of Innocence and The House of Mirth. What Edith Wharton is less known for are her ghost stories. Interestingly enough, Edith Wharton was terribly afraid of ghosts. In one of her essays, she wrote that up until the age of 28, she couldn't bear to have a ghost story in her bedroom. And she couldn't stand the thought if there was a ghost story in her father's library down below, she'd have to burn it. Um, she was plagued by nightmares of ghosts and what she called formless things as a child. She felt there was a, again, quote, menacing presence outside her mother's door. A brief aside, for someone who was so terribly afraid of ghosts, she built a lovely home with her husband um, upon 13 acres in Lenox, Massachusetts called The Mount, which many of you may know where she did a lot of her writing. And my daughter and I took a trip there about two years ago, and there was something about the house that my daughter, at the time she was almost nine years old, she just wanted to get out of it. And she kept saying, Mom, I want to get out of here. I'm scared here. I want to get out. And I said, okay, let's go to the gardens outside. Warren was famous for her gardening abilities. And we went out there and still my daughter was saying, let's get out of here, let's get out of here. So after doing some research, what I found out was the, the mount is known to be haunted and they do ghost tours there. And I, I just wonder what it was like for Wharton who really loved that home, although she did sell it when her marriage ended. Um, if she sensed any of that there, being so afraid of ghosts herself. Um, rumor has it that although the, there was only one person that actually died in the house um, after they had sold it of a heart attack, there may have been a boy that died in a well and a maid that hung herself. So who knows? But back to the story of the pomegranate seed. Pomegranate seed is the titles from the Greek myth about Persephone. Um, Pluto kidnapped her, took her to the underworld. Persephone was the goddess of fertility. And then supposedly she went and she ate some pomegranate seeds. And then she had to be from the garden of death. And then she had to remain in the underworld for all of eternity, which makes sense when you think about the story. The story of the pomegranate seed is about Charlotte and Kenneth Ashby. They are, well, not quite newly married. They were married about a year ago. And the story starts with Charlotte entering her beautiful home in New York City. Um, Kenneth is at work and she's having a moment where she doesn't want to enter the house. And the narrator says that she used to love to enter her house, but now she's not so sure because apparently there's been these letters left in, on the table in the hallway, hand delivered from a mysterious anonymous source. Charlotte gleans, actually no, she doesn't glean. She knows that based on the handwriting, these are letters written by a lady. We also know that when her husband, Kenneth, reads these letters, he changes completely. He turns pale. He becomes critical of Charlotte. He needs to go into his bedroom to nap and then he comes out, he reemerges from his room as if nothing happened. Now, when the story starts, there's about seven of these letters that have been sent. So Charlotte at, one, at some point enters her apartment and lo and behold, there's one of these letters from some woman she is certain of. So she decides, if you hear noises in the background, by the way, I have a little black cat and a jaunty little dog and for some reason they like when we record and they just like to come around and meow and bark and play with toys so anyway charlotte wants to get to the bottom of these letters who they're from 
Are they from a former lover? What's going on? So she goes and she ponders whether she should open the letter. But she knows that's wrong because they're addressed to her husband and that would be... So she decides that she's going to sit in the library and hide herself behind the door where she can see through the crack when her husband gets to the hallway and watch him read the letter. Husband comes home from work, opens the letter, and stares at it for a very long time. Then puts the letter back, and then he kisses the letter. And she says, Kenneth, what are you doing? And he says, where were you? Where did you come from? What's the matter? Anyway, they start to engage in this her questioning him, him about the letters. He seems very distraught with the fact that he can't tell her who these letters are from. He needs to go to bed to take a nap and she decides she's gonna ask him or suggest that they take a trip because she needs to get him away from who's ever writing these letters. He tells her, darling, I can't take a trip. No, no, no. Then they wake up the next morning He's at work by the time she awakes, and she gets a call from his secretary saying, he would like you to pack your bags, you're going away tomorrow. So she's packing her bags, and is quite happy in the beginning, but notices that he hasn't called all day. She calls the office, been told he's, been, he's out of town, which troubles her. Anyway, he never comes home. She goes to his mother's house down the street, who she gets along with, and he hasn't been to see the mother. The mother comes back with her, and they wait for him to arrive. It's past 9 o'clock. He never shows up. However, there's another note on the table in the hallway. She and his mother question whether they should open it. She ends up opening the note. They figure the note is from his dead wife, Elsie. We all assume he's never coming back home again, but Charlotte and her mom decide, her mother-in-law decide to call the police anyway, and that's where the story ends. It's a brilliant story. It's the kind of story that in the daylight, it's fine, but at nighttime when you're reading it, it kind of, it really gives you the creeps. This woman, Kenneth's ex-wife, has been present all along. Kenneth's ex-wife, Elsie, is described in the story as being domineering. Once somebody suggested to Charlotte that she shouldn't marry Kenneth because he was so in love with his ex-wife that he would never allow her to move a piece of furniture or do anything that Elsie wouldn't like. Kenneth proved himself to be quite the opposite until Elsie, from the netherworld couldn't stand it and needed to communicate with him and get into his head and bring him, take him away from his current life back to the land of the dead with her. And so the lead reader is left at the end of the story with Kenneth, Kenneth missing and Charlotte and her mother-in-law calling the police knowing that he's never to return. Because just like Pluto, Elsie has abducted him. And it's kind of great that we're doing this right before Halloween, All Hallows' Eve, when the living and the dead walk the world together. Well, apparently the living and the dead were walking together in Charlotte and Kenneth's house. And the dead was Elsie, who never left. But she couldn't stand to share Kenneth with Charlotte. So she abducted him, probably, I mean, that's how I read it, and took him back with her. So my question to you is, does this story for a modern audience still hold up today? It's slow, there's no scares, there's no blood, and yet there's something about it that's still so chilling. I guess it's about loneliness. Again, you know, Kenneth and, and relationships 
and where our place is in the world. Is it here? Is it there? Is it with your new wife? Is it with your dead wife? Is it with your husband who's still controlled by his dead wife? Who knows? You let me know on Twitter, on Instagram, and um, you'll find those links below, those handles. And if you like this, please hit subscribe. So thanks, and we'll see you next time.